Hey there, comic book fans. I am back from the comic shop again this week. And I only have two new comics this week on my pull list. So I went over to the dollar bin and pulled out three dollar comics just for the heck of it. Because how can I only leave with two comics? Uh, plus I have one other thing I found on my shelf I wanted to show you. An old comic that's kind of amusing. But uh, comic number one is The Savage Dragon. Uh, number 212... By Eric Larson, Savage Dragon continues with Malcolm Dragon joining the police force. And it looks like he's going to hell to fight some hellish villain this week. Freeze! You always kind of uh, know what to expect from the Savage Dragon. Uh, Eric Larson always gives you a good story and some good art. Uh, it's a solid superhero comic. Uh, if you ever want to read anything uh, cool and long-lived, check out the Savage Dragon. And the next thing we have is No Mercy, issue number 8. I was disappointed with issue number 7 uh, because it kind of... I don't know where the, what's up with the story. It kind of sh sh shattered and went off into all different directions and I'm not sure what's up with it. And I'm just a little disappointed because Carla Speed McNeil, who does the art, is one of my favorite creators of all time. And I just think she's a better writer than Alex DeCampi. I would much rather be reading Carla Speed McNeil's Finder than Alex DeCampi and Carla Speed McNeil's No Mercy. But, you know, it is that this this is what I got, so this is what I'll read, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll keep buying it because I like Carla Speed McNeil's work that much. But uh, I really can't recommend it after last... We'll see if this issue... After, last issue just made me go, Huh? What's going on in this comic? All of a sudden, I have no clue. It just kind of meandered. But anyway, Carla Speed McNeil still does a nice job. I like that cover. Looks like a sort of... Oh, looks at a sort of Hello Kitty bluebird does her hair Disney World cover. I'm sure that doesn't mean anything good inside. Whoops, it keeps falling over. Because uh, <laughs> this is a bit of a, I guess you'd call it a horror, not a horror comic, maybe a survival horror comic, maybe a, it's tough to say because it's kind of a real life story too. But anyway, No Mercy, issue number eight. And the first of the dollar comics is Steel, the Indestructible Man, number five. Um, I think I bought the first two issues of this off the stands when it came out. And then never saw it again. It was I remember, you know, back in the seventies, this was a mediocre comic, but it was a his, it took place in World War II, so I liked that aspect of it as a kid because I've always been into history. Jerry Conway, Don Heck, and Frank Cheramonte. Not the you know Don Heck's not exactly the most dynamic of superhero artists, especially nineteen seventies Don Heck. But you know, gives you a nice establishing shot of a. Uh, old place there, Steel, the indestructible man. He he was a World War II soldier who got injured and they replaced his bones with steel bones or something like that. Um, uh, look at that. These are My comic shop is one of those that just throws the dollar comics unbagged and boarded in a box so you can see the little fold where someone has thumbed it carelessly and torn the top. Oh well, it's only a dollar. What can you expect? The next dollar comic is Marvel Comics Presents number 90, featuring Wolverine. And the only reason I got this was the last of the three I picked. And the reason I got it was Sam Keith. I don't have much Sam Keith did the front and back cover. I don't have much Sam Keith in my collection at all. So I was like, you know what, I'm, whoops, I may as well get a Sam Keith book to add to the collection. So it's Sam Keith drawing Wolverine. I don't know. I, th I think I recently heard someone say this story hasn't been reprinted yet, but I don't know. I think it even has some, if I remember correctly, it had some J early Jay Lee in it. Let's see. Where's that? What do we got over there? I think that uh, Sam Keith, yeah, Jay Lee doing uh, Beast and Friends. So there we go. There's some early Jay Lee. Interesting, being that I just bought some J. Lee Wildcat stuff. But I gotta say, it's a very nice Sam Keith cover, so uh, that was worth a dollar. And the final dollar book we've got 
is Generation X Holiday Spectacular number four. I picked this one up just because I want, I'd like to, once again, I wanted to add some Chris Piccolo to my uh, collection. I don't have a ton, I have a couple of the first Generation X comics. Um, I barely, I remember reading a little of this. Oh, it's got a, what has it got? It's got cards in it and, oh, that's a, I'm going to tear those out because I don't care. They're the cards. It's I, who wrote this? Let me see. Because I, I remember, I remember reading Generation X. Oh, Scott Lobdell. I've never been a huge fan of Scott Lobdell's writing. That's probably why I didn't like the the uh, first Generation X comics and don't really have any of it. I think I have two issues, maybe. So I figured I'd get another Chris Piccolo comic. Um, and I like the cover, the repeated bells pattern, the logo that's nearly unreadable with that terrible coloring in it uh, <laughs> you know what the heck few dollar comics on a slow week and the last thing i want to show you is this cover right here which was already on my shelf i'd forgotten about it uh it's the brave and the bold pres uh pres brave and the bold presents batman and the new wonder woman number 87 and the reason I find that, first of all, this is one of the, I think someone gave this to me over the, you know, years ago. It's one of those, it's one of those comics that used to happen to me a lot more years ago when uh, someone who just ran across a couple of comics was like, hey, you collect comics? Here, take these. And you're like, all right, even though it might not be something you're terribly interested in, but at least this one's a brave and a bold, so that's a decent comic. I have, I have other really crappy ones that, uh, but what I find so strange about this is it's a, Wonder Woman bondage cover with the Diana Rigg Wonder Woman era, but as she's staked to the ground. But it's just so weird because the threat to Wonder Woman is Batman in an out of control race car, and it's especially funny because it's one of those race cars that you, um, you know, one of those Formula One race cars that you really hunker down in. But Batman's just kind of half out of it so you can see him hanging out of that race car looking like a giant and and i don't know if i've ever read this issue but who came up with a crazy plan to stake wonder woman on the side of a racetrack and then ram batman into her i mean it ah. but anyway there's a wonder woman bondage cover that you might never have seen before and it doesn't really jump out at you as a bondage cover because you barely see wonder woman down in the corner she just looks like a woman in a white suit but that that's her um brave and the bold 87 add it to your wonder woman bondage covers collections finally we'll give you a look at some of our background art um there's a monster face and a swirl chested woman um, both of these are from January, I think. I, I think I showed the color ver finished color version of that, uh, the smaller one. I don't think I printed it out big. But there's the black and white version, and this is the, the, the faces I do with, uh, in ink with my little dry brush technique that I just kind of pick away and make darker and darker and make things recede and pull the white. So this is all, there's no ash, this is all the white of the paper. There's no, that's not like black and white paint. That's all black ink and the white of the paper. So it's kind of about building forms off of, uh, just, oop, that's not like a, the paper's curling. It's got so much ink on it, the paper doesn't sit straight. But anyway, there's, there's a look at a couple of things this week, and we will catch you all later.